final space is still up and running, so for now, I'm gonna be taking a quick break from my final space content. But once it's complete, you can expect two more installments of character analysis. At least from final space. I actually have four upcoming installments of character analysis videos after these next two solo reviews. But in the meantime, I decided to finally review another one of my all-time favorite cartoon shows. This has been a long time coming. Especially since it's recently been the show's three-year anniversary. Sound familiar? Craig of the Creek is one of my all-time favorite shows currently airing. It's got great characters, creative world building, heartwarming and relatable stories, and so much more. I've been wanting to review the show for a while, but I've noticed that a lot of Craig of the Creek videos have been zinged with copyright. A lot. So, I've been pretty cautious with my more recent videos, but I think that I've figured out how to work around copyright pretty well by now. And here's hoping I just didn't jinx that. Now that I've pretty much set my own path as a hoping to soon be major cartoon reviewer, I think it's finally time I give Craig of the Creek the much needed attention it deserves. Seriously, the show is so underrated. I've had a lot of ideas in mind about the first episode of Craig of the Creek I should review, but I decided on a more recent episode for a number of reasons. I'm gonna be honest, this video might turn out to be pretty controversial. What reasons, you might ask? Well, let's find out as we take a look at the sunflower. So this episode starts out with our main trio, Craig, Kelsey, and JP sitting at their little stump table and having a little snack party to celebrate spring finally arriving. Ah, Mortimer! As brave a warrior as you may be, spicy beefers are for kids, not birds. Yeah, spicy foods are a big no-no for a lot of animals, especially smaller ones. They don't really have the same tolerance for spicy stuff like we do. Anyway, a little hamster wanders onto the table and steals a cookie that Craig was saving. So they try to split up and go after it. Kelsey and Mortimer then stumble upon a few hamster tubes and soon they discover a huge playground made of hamster equipment. It's here where we meet Sun. She explains that this is where she and her hamster cookies stay and hang out. Kelsey and Sun seem to hit it off great. Meanwhile, Craig and JP approach a bush after they hear some rustling inside of it. <laughs> Don't eat me! Okay. But then they realized that the cat wasn't the only critter in the bush. They try to tell Kelsey what happened over the phone, but she unknowingly interrupts them. So they have to go over there to explain. Oh yeah, I just go in the wood chips. You what? They meet up with Kelsey and Son, and they break the sad news to her. The cat got to Cookie before they did. In other words, the cat killed Cookie. Moment of silence. Anyway, I'm really surprised they were able to get away with this. This is a big risk on a channel like Cartoon Network. But I'm also kinda happy they were able to get away with this, and I'll go more into that later. Kelsey immediately feels sympathy for Sun and wants to comfort her. The four of them go to the pet cemetery and have a small funeral for Cookie. It's also revealed that Kelsey had a lot of pet birds before her current Mortimer. This is also hinted at in other previous episodes and in the pilot. This is a lot of birds, and it's sad that this many birds died, but to be fair, Kelsey is still pretty young and sometimes life happens. The important thing is to learn from the past so that history doesn't repeat itself. Kelsey still feels bad for Sun even after that day, so she tries to go back and help Sun in whatever way she can. Sun is still pretty hurt, and she ultimately turns Kelsey away, claiming she doesn't know what it's like. Kelsey then lashes out at her, and honestly, I could understand why Kelsey gets frustrated here, but at the same time, this was a little bit harsh. And I do know the feeling of people trying to claim they understand what your struggles are like when they really don't. The whole saying, if I were you, is pretty invalidating because guess what? You're not me. I know that not everyone who says this has bad intentions as shown by Kelsey, but sometimes the things people say that may seem comforting are ultimately not comforting. Anyway, it's the next day and... Dang it, nothing! Those is out of commission again! JP, just take a Zyrtec, dang it! As I was saying, it's the next day and lots of kids lost their hamsters. The reason they're all gone is because Sun took Kelsey's little snide comment about getting a hundred hamsters a little too seriously. The trio confronts Sun and she sticks the hamsters on Craig and JP while Kelsey tries to talk with her. Eventually, the hamster dome explodes. Honestly, this scene can be a little bit hard to watch with all those innocent hamsters being chucked and flung everywhere, but I really don't think this show meant any harm. 
In the past, the show proves that it has done its fair share of research. I just feel like this time around, it was a case of something in theory not going so great in practice. After the dome explodes, Kelsey and Sun come across Cookie's grave, and finally, Kelsey and Sun are able to have a proper heart-to-heart. -heart. I'm sorry I got upset with you. Losing someone is hard. And I remembered all the things that had helped me, but I forgot it also takes time. And while I'm definitely surprised this episode was able to get away with such a heavy and important subject matter, I'm definitely happy that they did. A lot of adults seem to think that talking about death with kids is taboo, and I agree. It is a hard topic, but it's also an important topic. The biggest reason why is that it could happen at any moment in a kid's life. Take Kelsey, for example. In this episode, it shows that she lost a lot of pet birds, but not only that, earlier on in the series, it's revealed that she lost her mother at a very young age. So yeah, Kelsey has a lot of experience with death for someone who's only 8 years old. But just because you might have a lot of experience with something, doesn't mean you always have a lot of knowledge about something. And that's shown here. Kelsey tries to help Sun in ways that helped Kelsey in the past, but they don't work for Sun. People deal with grief in different ways, and Kelsey learns that there's no one-size-fits-all approach. You have to figure what's right for the individual person and how they can cope. And she realizes this, this and apologizes. Kelsey may have been able to move on from her other Mortimer birds and her mom pretty quickly, but it's not always that easy for some people. And Sun is kind of right. No matter how many new hamsters she might get, they'll never be the same as Cookie. Both of these characters have dealt with grief in their own ways, and that's okay. And this is a very mature and important lesson for kids to learn, no matter how old they are. As long as you tackle the subject with care, it's okay to discuss serious matters like this with kids, and it's also extremely important. So anyways, Kelsey ends up helping Sun move on by helping her take care of the sunflower that grew from Cookie's grave. And honestly, this ending montage is just beautiful and all kinds of heartwarming. And that was the sunflower. All right, guys, I'm going to be completely honest with you. When I first saw sneak peeks of this episode, I was a little worried. And that because it involves hamster care. And there's actually a lot of misinformation about hamster care or other small animals like this. Now, hear me out before you rush to the comments and call me a snowflake. I'm 99% sure the Craig of the Creek crew did not have any bad intentions when writing this episode. It's just that there's a lot of misinformation about hamster care out there in the world, and it's important to do your research when taking care of any animal. I know I might be sounding like Karen or Snowflake right now to some of you, but animal care is something that I'm really passionate about, and it's also really important to know your own pets and their needs. I know some people are going to say, it's just a cartoon and I shouldn't be so upset about it when it's not real, but like I said in my last video, sometimes media can rub off onto society in a number of ways. Look. All I'm saying is, if you're considering getting a pet, do your research on what type of animal you want. It's important for the animal and for yourself. But after finally being able to watch this episode, it doesn't have as much red flags as I was worried about. But there are still a few that I want to point out here. Those being that hamsters don't really like heights, they're foragers by natural instinct. And this next one is a major one. It's not a good idea to put multiple hamsters in the same enclosure together it's pretty likely that they'll fight, and hamster fights can get pretty gruesome. Also, hamsters are more nocturnal, so this is a little inaccurate, although this one I'm just gonna chalk up to cartoon logic. But that's pretty much about it. The show seems to be pretty knowledgeable with animal care. It just had a few minor hiccups, but that's okay. From other episodes, it's clear to me that this show really cares about doing research regarding pet care, and it's okay to not know everything, but as long as you're willing to learn from your mistakes, that's what's important, and I get it. When I was a kid, I had hamsters and other pets like fish and birds that I didn't really do the best job taking care of, and by the time I realized all the things I did wrong, it was pretty much too late to fix those mistakes, if you know what I mean. But at the same time, I was a kid, and again, there's a lot of misinformation out there, so it was easy for little 8-year-old me to not be the best animal caretaker in the world. But now that I do have more knowledge of how to take care of animals, I hope to do better with future pets that I get. I already have a little bit of a head start. Hey, Wesley. <laughs> and aside from that aspect, I'm really surprised but also extremely happy that this episode tackled the subject of losing a furry friend or even a family member. 
As I said before, these topics are important to teach kids with care. Keywords being with care. And this episode does that beautifully. I've been wanting to see another proper Kelsey-centric episode for quite some time now, and this episode delivers on that. And it's one of the best episodes of this whole show I could ask for. I may have a soft spot for Kelsey-centric episodes because I could personally relate to a lot of them, so a lot of Kelsey-centric episodes are among my favorites, but this is a Kelsey-centric episode that I feel could make a lot of people's best list, no matter who their favorite character is. And yes, Kelsey is my favorite character, and that's the biggest reason why. In hindsight, I was really worried to talk about this episode for the reasons I mentioned and about how I would end up being viewed in the eyes of some of you, but now I'm really glad that I decided to talk about this episode. I was able to share a topic that I'm passionate about and teach you guys a little bit more about me, and I was able to go over an amazing episode that could be an easy contender for one of the best of the whole series, flaws notwithstanding. Whether you're a Craig of the Creek super fan like me or a Craig of the Creek newcomer, this is an episode I definitely recommend to anyone and everyone that I can. And that's all I wanted to say for now. See you peeps.